It's all about El Nino and everything else, right? Yes. So a lot of questions about what the winter is going to have in store after last year's somewhat historic winter in terms of snowfall, especially, but in terms of cold as well. So we got to go about three to four thousand miles away into the equatorial Pacific Ocean to see what the sea surface temperatures are like. And normally we have trade winds or your normal wind direction and speed pushing the warmer waters westward. And that gets pushed really far westward during La Nina winters, what we've had the past couple of seasons. But in certain years, those trade winds weaken, pushing these warmer waters closer to the coast of South America, enhance storminess closer to the west coast of South America. That has impacts on the United States, even though it's so far away, the ocean temperatures are tied to the atmosphere and the jet stream patterns with the El Nino in place, which is what that uh, sea surface temperature pattern looks like across the Pacific Ocean. We have an active jet stream across the southern U.S. leading to wet wetter conditions there, but the polar jet stream that draws in colder air gets pushed farther to the east. So that means warmer air can spill south into our region and we don't have that cold air that comes down from Canada as a whole for the months of especially December, January, and February favored for above normal temperatures. Here's that signal again with the sea surface temperatures, the ocean temperatures just off the coast of South America in the equatorial Pacific Ocean showing well above normal values. So it's going to be a strong El Nino. And that means more storms. You have this couplet between the ocean where the ocean kind of feeds into the atmosphere, leads to circulations. And there are certain atmospheric circulations on a larger scale that intensify those jet streams, especially that southern subtropical jet stream across the southern U.S., leading to the wetter conditions closer to the Gulf of Mexico and even into portions of the desert southwest. But with that polar jet stream pushed farther east, that means the Pacific Northwest and the northern plains usually sees those above normal temperatures in these El Nino years. Now, we've been in La Nina for the past three winters, this triple dip La Nina. And that has actually led to above normal temperatures in the winter of 2020 to 2021, which was not really what we were expecting, but it certainly led to a more uh, 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 very uh, La Nina. Uh, the La Nina had an effect that we would expect especially last winter, 2022 to 2023's winter, when we had that 100 plus inch snowfall season and well below normal temperatures. Now again, we're flipping the script. Those sea surface temperatures in the Pacific Ocean are really shooting up into almost record setting territory here. We're going into a very strong El Nino phase and it's a 75 to 85% chance it will become a strong El Nino. And the stronger the El Nino is, meaning the warmer that those sea surface temperatures are, that means those patterns are more likely to, to reflect the expected El Nino, meaning it would lead to those above normal temperatures here. Now, past very strong El Ninos, one being from 2015 to 2016, that winter had a well above normal temperatures and very little snow. The winters of 97 to 98, 82 to 83 are also strong El Nino winters that, fe that uh, featured well above normal temperatures and very little snow. Our normal seasonal snowfall is about 50 inches. So could we be in store for that? Well, there's a higher correlation between the El Nino and temperature versus precipitation. That means it's more reliable for temperature forecasting. There's a higher correlation with that connection in the Pacific Ocean to our weather with temperature compared to a lower correlation, meaning it's, meaning it's not as reliable for snowfall forecasting across our region. So therefore, snowfall during all El Nino winters, it's kind of a mixed signal. There is a signal towards somewhat near normal amounts of snowfall and a lower potential of seeing above normal amounts of snowfall. This is the chance of seeing an above normal snowfall during El Nino winters, and it's only at about 30 to 40% chances around our region. So past El Ninos, again, looking at an, an analysis of them, showing a pretty strong signal for the above normal temperatures on the top graph there. But on the bottom map here showing the near normal precipitation amounts might be a little bit more favored or kind of there's not enough of a strong signal with all those past El Nino winters to really give as strong of a signal for precipitation as there is for those warmer temperatures. And again, we're talking about temperatures averaged out over the period. There will be cold snaps. There will, of course, be snowstorms, but we're thinking that there's going to be, as a whole, warmer than normal temperatures especially. So let's look at a few maps here. The second half of November featuring above normal temperatures. That's in the forecast. Kind of a uh, weak signal for below normal amounts of precipitation. And this is as our normal highs slide into the lower 30s. 
Now as we get more into the winter months, looking at November, December, and January, still with that signal of above normal temperatures around here, with below normal amounts of precipitation as somewhat of a favoring, kind of lower confidence in that precipitation forecast. Still with the medium confidence for above normal temperatures for meteorological winter, December, January, and February, and that's when our normal high temperatures are only in the 20s. So again, we're favored to be above that value into January, February, and March, still looking at above normal temperatures as a whole with equal chances of the precipitation forecast being above or below normal. Similar situation with precipitation as we get later into the winter and even into spring, February, March, and April, a little bit of a weaker signal for those above normal temperatures around here. So other factors at play besides that strong El Nino in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. The temperature of all global oceans is above normal, and that could play into a factor with other connections that we look at in the North Atlantic and the North Pacific Ocean having impacts on our weather on a seasonal time scale. And we have to see how the polar vortex behaves if that splits off and leads to a relatively short but intense blast of cold air at some point in the winter season. So looking into the seasonal outlook, that El Nino, La Nina phase is kind of the biggest fingerprint on our winter outlook. And it's a very strong signal for El Nino this year, which will likely lead to above normal temperatures as a whole. Yeah, that's right. That's the key right there, as a whole. We right. will have Arctic outbreaks. Okay, uh, it's North most, Dakota. Yeah, it's right. North Dakota. We're, we're probably going to have that. Yeah. But as a whole, and a single storm is not El Nino okay. or La Nina. A lot of people okay. think that it's a it's a phenomenon that goes on for months, years, in fact, sometimes. So that all can detect or uh, de depict our local weather. Right. Yeah. A repeat of last winter, not in the cards. Okay. Yeah. That's all I like needed it. to yeah. know. I appreciate it. Now we understand. There. Now yes. we get it. Thank you, Jake. <laughs>